Hi, this is Aileen, the Angelic Channel, speaking with spirit and sharing my messages of light on your behalf, hoping to help you along your journey of transformation, of ascension, of <clears throat> spirituality, whatever label or name you want to call it. Well, it's been a very, very interesting time for everybody. I can see that, including myself. We definitely had some anchoring to do after eclipse season. And we also had um, an autumn clear out, a release, and then a grounding of the acceptance and the peaceful energies that have been flooding in. So I've been getting downloads like crazy the last few weeks, which is why I haven't made a video. <clears throat> when it's downloading time for me, I'm very, very much um, in a constant trance, in a state of meditation, um, very much spending time on my own to, to tune in and to make use of the, the new tools and the new information. Um, the new light codes that are being integrated into my body and into my consciousness. So here we go. Let's get into it for October 2017. So as I said in my previous video, <clears throat> the congratulations to the human collective consciousness because we have indeed ascended. You know, ascension has taken place. Yes, it's always a continual process of growth and expansion. That's why we're here away from our original source having these playing out these dramas and having these experiences but the key now is about um, accepting and learning how to be a conscious multi-dimensional human being 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 the the emphasis on the word being in the co in the universe Understanding that before the fifth dimension, before the new earth, the new shift, the new paradigm, again, whatever label you wish to call it, we as humans did not, um, we did not ascend beyond the physical body into, we did not go into fourth or fifth dimensional space within our physical bodies. Once our consciousness started to raise and started to go higher than the third dimension, we would automatically have burst out of the physical body and transition back to source, i.e. we would have died in some shape or form. And that's why we had a lot of amazing teachers and, and spiritual leaders who would have sudden unexpected deaths. Um, the angels are showing me Princess Diana would be a perfect example of that. Her consciousness was rapidly increasing and expanding higher and higher and higher. Um, and, and in that that timeline her physical body would not have been able to maintain such a high level of awakening of a con of consciousness along with anybody else in that time of those timelines so it would have to break out of the physical ego out of the physical constraints and return back to source the difference is from the 2012 shift into the new paradigm the new earth from 2013 onwards our bodies for the first time ever which is phenomenal in human history we are staying in the same physical body not needing to die and go back transition back to source staying physically present and actually transmuting and uh, transforming <clears throat> our physical construct from carbon into a light crystalline body and that can really really take its toll so for those of you who have been feeling very ill, who have been in and out of hospital, who are having just drastic changes in how you eat, how you sleep, how you function physically. Understand that, be kind to your body. Your physical body is an extension of your consciousness. So just understand there is an adjustment period. Um, I have a lot of clients talking about lack of sleep um, or else needing what they they judge as way too much sleep what the angels ask us to do is to release these human linear 
ideas, concepts and judgments about what is enough sleep and what isn't enough sleep. Understanding that when you need to sleep, you sleep and you respect and honour that in your body. And that's an extension of a loving, high vibrational consciousness. What I found is throughout the years, being an angel channel, um, being someone who is constantly in conversation with spirit, I would sleep what other people would call strange hours. They weren't strange to me because I understood what was happening. I understood integration. Even when I was a teenager, I would have understood these concepts because um, the angels would have explained these things to me in depth. So if you're somebody who feels that you're only really wakening up now, you're probably going to need a whole lot more sleep than usual because the physical body hasn't caught up with that consciousness yet. If you're going through a lot of downloading, you will have to also sleep more and rest, just rest really, just literally lying down in your bed, resting is going to be required as well. However, for those of us who have been doing this pretty much a lifetime's work, we don't have that, we've adjusted somewhat. So um, our sleeping, like my personally, I'm sleeping fine. I don't have any sleep issues at the moment. Um, <clears throat> unless I'm integrating or breaking down some really, really negative egoic structure, then I will usually have to rest more. I might have to take a nap or I might have to meditate a whole lot more. But that's unusual now because I do process and integrate things very, very quickly. And you will too, if you're worried that you're going to spend the rest of your, your, your 5D lifetime here sleeping, you won't. It's just temporary, it's just a phase. Um, and again, so what if you do? Like sleeping is wonderful. It's a gift. When we sleep, we are, you know, our physical body allows a break of momentum. We're able to go back to source. We're able to recalibrate, rebalance and come back into our physical bodies upon awakening. So it's such a beautiful gift we have to be able to sleep. If you're not able to sleep, on the other hand, you have some inner work to do. There's something that's preventing you from surrendering to that recalibration process. And I would suggest you book in with some healer, shaman, uh, medicine person, therapist, somebody who really helps you on your journey that you resonate with because you have some work to do around that. Now, getting back to October. Every single choice in every single moment is determining what timeline, what paradigm you are now existing on. This is very, very important. Remember that you're free to choose again and again and again. If you don't like the choices, the outcomes of the choices that you've made up to this point, you can choose again and you can choose again. And you can play around with your realities until you get used to implementing your multidimensional consciousness. Multidimensional meaning, when you're fully conscious and awake, you realize that this is just one dimension and there are too many to name or number other dimensions around us. When you learn how to be, how to implement that like being the driver of your consciousness, of your reality, you can access, select, slip in and slip out of different consciousnesses. Now, I was shown this many, many, many years ago. I used to do this effortlessly as a child. I would be shown the different layers or doorways of consciousness, of, of realities that I could choose from. And I would just say, mm, I'll have that one, please. And I would it would be, I would become that consciousness. Um, went through periods of it again in my teens and then throughout my 20s, I had massive spiritual um, uh, experiences where one in particular I remember very strongly um, and I could literally see like books on a shelf, like being shown a shelf full of different books and each book represents a different reality. And I got to choose the book that I wanted to step into. That's really how multidimensional um, living works. And when you get the hang of it, it's very easy. However, if you're just stepping in and stepping out of that, if you're not able to hold that, 
you still have some work to do and you still have to um, play around like, like a child learning to use a knife and fork. You know, you don't you don't expect the child right away to have the hand have a handle of these new physical tools they've been given or how to tie their shoelaces or how to get dressed. They have to develop motor skills. They have to get used to using their hands and fingers and mouths and muscles and their brain and all that kind of stuff. So it's the same with the multidimensional reality. We are all learning how to participate in that fully and how to give it our best and how to select to sift through and select the type of reality, the type of lives um, and golden experiences that we wish to have. So, do, you know, be, be gentle with yourself, respect yourself. And that's the key here. If you find you're throwing a tantrum because you're not able to figure it out just yet, that's just the old ego mind of control, the physical mind trying to be in control. Remember, this is a feeling way of being in the world. And I've been saying this since, since I was 12 years old or younger. It's about feeling your way into a vibrational state. You won't think your way there. Forget about listening to this information from an intellectual mindset. And I say this in my meditation classes and courses. Leave the intellectual mind aside. It's not, it's not a tool when it comes to energy, emotion and vibration. These are feeling states. So start to use, start to be a feeler of life. Start to emotionally process life and emotionally integrate things. The trick here is though, for October and onwards, don't attach in stories and people and faces and places into the emotion. Just take the emotion on its own. That way you'll process it much quicker it's just raw, pure energy in an emotional state that you're able to integrate and digest. And you leave, you know, the ego is not getting to control and have it say. When you bring the emotion with the attachments of stories of the people, my mother, my father, my ex-boyfriend, my ex-husband, my sister, my child, you're bringing in a big, heavy load of baggage with that emotion. That's a whole lot more. That, that's really tough to swallow. That's a big pill to swallow. That's a big seven course meal to digest on your system. And that, that's what's going to slow everything down. And this is something with my healing work I'm really, really gifted at. I am able to bring you very, very gently, very subtly into the raw emotion so that you can process it quickly, digest it and have it move through the chakra system, leave the physical body so that you're clear and neutral again to get on with your life. But you can do this for yourself. You just have to bring in the emotions and see the emotions as they are. And no judgment on the emotions. Because again, that's a story. That's, that's the ego having judgment on things. So just give me one second. Okay. <clears throat> now, so that's the, what the angels have been talking to me about a lot in the last few weeks. Um... Yes, so they're talking about choice and they're reminding us that we are not victims of circumstances. We are not victims of whatever life, whatever experience we happen to find ourselves in right now, we can choose again. And it's only an opportunity, especially if you're in, if you're in a lot of pain right now, if you're really, really suffering right now, that's actually a golden opportunity this is a doorway for you to learn how to to work through those at raw take the raw motion of the suffering and i just did two videos on pain and suffering and loss and allowing and how to work through those because i've had a lot i've had a lot of painful physical illness pain like body pain um, and emotional pain and um, throughout the eclipse season and I have worked through that. I am now in a very, very peaceful, loving, neutral space. And that's because I was able to go right into the raw emotion 